Hogwarts, Hogwarts, Hoggy, Hoggy, Hogwarts, teach us something, please. I'm not doing the whole thing. We're doing a drink inspired by Harry Potter today. Hey there, hi there, ho there. My name is Michael. I'm a former bartender from the Kalamazoo, Michigan area. And today we're going to go into the fourth day of 25 Drinks of Christmas, doing a cocktail inspired by the series of Harry Potter films, which I'm a huge, huge fan of. I was fortunate enough to have taken a somewhat recent trip to uh, Florida to go to Universal and do the whole Harry Potter theme park shindig. It was wildly fun. Uh, I really, really did enjoy it. One of the best parts of it, honestly, was um, what is in this bottle? Universal markets the whole pumpkin juice part of the film in the books, this kind of like uh, pumpkin-based juice drink they drink throughout the films. It's all over the place, and the stuff they have at Universal is delicious. There's a bunch of recipes online showing you how to make it yourself at home, and I just kind of improvised my own, and that's going to end up being the base for this cocktail. This is gonna be like a super specialized ingredient. You could probably find something um, just store-bought, ready to use, that could replace this reasonably, or just buy some from Universal. For those of you who want to give it a shot, there is a, a recipe for this. It makes a significantly larger portion than what is in this bottle. I rebottled this for the sake of not having a giant 750 milliliter bottle overflowing with pumpkin juice uh, on the table, but it's pretty simple, actually. And once you've got that done, you have a shelf, not shelf stable, but a reasonably fortuitous uh, pumpkin juice made with actual <laughs> pumpkin. Which I don't doubt the stuff at Universal is, but I'm sure this is a lot more natural than what you're getting. <laughs> the, the texture was so different mm. from the one at Universal. <laughs> Grainy is not the word I'm looking for. No, I think that's a fair word to use. That is a, like a really big thing, actually. This is not like as thin as a juice you might think of. When you think of like how thin apple juice is, it's like, oh yeah, you can sip that straight to fine. This is kind of thick and has a sort of um, texture to it that you wouldn't expect because there's fibrous pumpkin in it. As far as fixing that goes, if you were to take it and mix it with water, kind of stir it, blend it to kind of break up as much of the fibers and then put it through like a coffee strainer, that'd be the best way to do it. If you really wanted to avoid having like the, the mass of the pumpkin in there, to just take everything and kind of pull the flavors out of it and then just be left with like raw plant matter that you can just toss. I don't have a problem with this. I think that this is like perfectly drinkable, um, <laughs> but it, it is a different texture than you're probably looking for or would usually experience. If you serve it hot, which I've tried, uh, or cold with the proper amount of dilution, it kind of fixes that because it's more like you're drinking like a hot cocoa where there's like some density to it. But yeah, that is something to be, to be noteworthy of. I'm glad you mentioned that. Because <laughs> I remember you tried it, you were like, this isn't what I was expecting. <laughs> no. Yeah. It does kind of catch you off guard with how, how thick it can be. So let's start breaking down the cocktail then if we've got our, our base ingredients here. We're gonna use brandy, some simple syrup, uh, some lemon juice, and then for, uh, along with a pumpkin juice, obviously. And then we've got uh, some cinnamon and whipped cream here for a garnish. Uh, I'm gonna make this one cold because I actually just like the way that it, it comes out cold. If you wanted to avoid some of that discomfort, um, just take some of this reheated in a, a slow saucepan until it's warmed through uh, and then pour it over everything the same way I'm going to do into an Irish coffee mug. Uh, so this drink is called uh, Arubius. Um, as many of you may know, in 2022, we lost Robbie Coltrane, the actor who portrayed Rubius Hagrid in the Harry Potter films. And I wanted to make a drink inspired uh, off of a particular scene in the movie uh, after him to sort of uh, pay respects. This scene is a scene in the third movie, Prisoner of Azkaban, where they, just after they've saved Buckbeak from being executed, Hagrid invites Dumbledore in for a cup of tea. More a large brandy. For no small glasses of this. Uh, so we're going to do that. We're gonna start off with a ounce and a half of brandy. Next, we're going to get an ounce of lemon juice. Uh, adding a little bit of citrus kind of brightens it up and then helps add to the dilution a little bit to combat the texture. And then we're going to need a half an ounce of simple syrup. Pour that on, and this has been in the fridge for a while, so it's really thick. You don't have to refrigerate a double syrup. You can, you can just leave it on the shelf, and it will be fine. And this is actually meant to be a long drink, so we're actually going to use quite a bit of our pumpkin juice here—a whole four ounces. There is pumpkin juice all over the floor. I just slipped through. I'm sorry. Anyway, we're going to do four ounces of our pumpkin juice. Now this is thicker than like a regular juice, but it does actually pour quite easily. So even though its texture is a little bit off, it's pretty easy to work with. All right, so we're gonna shake this cocktail. So we're gonna need some ice. I'm gonna use two whole cubes and I'm actually going to crack both of them because that way we'll get more dilution than we would normally expect, which is important in this context. I'm gonna pull up our Irish coffee mug here. 
put our cap on and give this a good firm shaking. Take our glass. I'm gonna double strain this because there's so much small ice in there. I wanna catch some of that so it's not just floating on the top. To finish that off, we're gonna take some whipped cream and just garnish it with a whole cinnamon stick. And voila, there you have a Rubius. I know, it comes, it looks really snazzy, doesn't it? We'll put a straw on that just to make that easier to drink and give that a taste. Mmm, that's, that's super good. <laughs> it tastes kind of like a cross between um, applesauce because of the, like a combination of like the textural like thickness of it and pumpkin pie, like somewhere in between the two. That, that little bit of lemon that we added is kind of brightening the whole thing up and bringing it to that kind of level of acidity that's like oddly familiar in a way. I will say, the brandy completely disappeared. <laughs> There's a full ounce and a half of that in here and it is just missing, it is gone. Um, so this could sneak up on you pretty quick. <laughs> Happily so, because that is so good. Did you like it, Taz? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you like it? <laughs> yeah. When tasting the just regular pumpkin juice without anything added to it, mm -hmm. it has kind of, it has that texture that I was talking about earlier. This drink doesn't have that texture, so it's smooth. Yeah, between, between like the, the liquor, the syrup, the um, lemon juice, and then the act of shaking it with ice, which adds some water to it, it kind of creams it. It's good though, I really like it. Nice, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I, I've done Robbie a good a good one, I think. <laughs> that makes me happy. Well, thank you all so much for watching uh, this episode of 25 Drinks of Christmas We Made. The Rubius, a, uh, a drink inspired by the Harry Potter movies. I guess I never really explained why I wanted to do a Harry Potter film. For whatever reason to me, Harry Potter is like a Christmas movie. Like the, just the, the vibes and emotions of everything on screen. Well, which wants? Uh, with fair, there are full eight movies. I think in general, they're good Christmas movies. They're on all the time around Christmas time. All of the films, have, even like the later ones where things are like really dark, mm -hmm. they all have like a moment at Christmas time where they're all doing stuff and hanging out and there's a kind of like a moment of levity. It always happens around that time of year. So I've always kind of thought like, oh yeah, this is just a Christmas movie with a bunch of magic added. <laughs> What's your favorite moment from all the Harry Potter films? Oh, man. <laughs> or like something from your top five at the very least. I mean, not your well, number one, but like, so the, the one you like the most. Favorite moment from the movies? Yeah. Probably the fight between, uh, or the duel between Voldemort and Dumbledore at the end of Phoenix. Oh yeah, that scene's badass. I, I'd have to say my favorite is probably, um, oh man, that's my shit. I asked this question, I don't think I have an answer yeah, for it. it's hard. It's hard. Uh, <laughs> that scene in his office, when the ministry comes to arrest him oh, yeah. for being like a fraud or whatever, and he's like, actually, I'm not going with you. Shazam! <laughs> you know, like. I have no intentions of, <laughs> how do you say, come. Coming quietly. Kingsley's line after that, mm -hmm. you might not like him, minister, but you gotta admit, Dumbledore's got style. <laughs> like, hell yeah, he does. He's the coolest fucking wizard on the face of the planet. Oh. I have three favorite characters. Um, Meta, Moody, Tonks, and Sirius. Is that it? No, no particular order. Yeah. All right, well here, I'm gonna give you this so I don't accidentally finish it. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of 25 Drinks of Christmas. We did the Ruby S and uh, Memoriam drink for Robbie Coltrane. May he rest in peace. Hopefully you guys are enjoying the series so far. If you are, click the like button down below and subscribe to catch the next one. There's 25 days of it. You know where to find it. It'll be here tomorrow, exact same time, every single day. Every single day. <laughs> Thanks for watching, you guys have a good one. Bye bye